Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I have decided I will vlog daily since the start of this awful war with Russia. Honestly, I did not expect it will take me a year, but another positive side of the story is that we have shaped a tremendous community of friends and people interested in Ukraine. I'm really grateful for 45,000 of supporters, friends and our truly valuable community. Thank you so much for being with me. If you're new to the channel, go check some videos and if you like them, subscribe because there are many things that the world can learn and like about Ukraine and I'm trying to update you with them. And today I will tell you a little bit more about my recent trip to Kyiv. I have just returned home today early in the morning and there are some emotions that I want to share. Also, we have filmed two important episodes with Sasha with nice camera and professional sound and I will be able to show you more of Kyiv being Bucha and uh, sell tell you some messages that I consider really important during this time. In general, I felt really bad that it took me more than a year to visit my capital uh, because of some personal issues, some of you know. I was not able to travel that much, but Kyiv was the first on the list and I felt my responsibility as a Ukrainian like to come into the heart of my country. Honestly, I very much like and respect our capital. If you ask me, would I like to live in Kyiv for like all time? No, um, I feel a little bit tired of such cities, but from the other point of view to come and work on particular projects, like to spend a couple of weeks and then return back, that's exactly the schedule that I practice with Kyiv. Kyiv is big, Kyiv is loud. That's why I did not manage to film like personally that many vlogs as I wanted. And in this video, I will incorporate some uh, stories, video stories that I want to share with you, but I was not able to comment normally because of the loud noise around. And the very first uh, view that I would like to show you is the one from Lavra, which is a historic uh, UNESCO heritage, once belonged to Moscow Patriarchate, but now returning back to Ukrainian church. And it has a magnificent view from the hills on the Dnieper River. Have a look. Look at how beautiful Kiev and Dnipro River are. Many tourists who come to Kyiv are surprised actually at how big Dnieper River is. It is very strong and many Ukrainian writers, including Mykola Vol, used to say that not every bed can actually cross the Dnieper River. You can um, take a ship and travel, you can sunbathe, you, there are different extreme kinds of sport that are not for me. And in general, Dnieper is Dnipro is a very beautiful river, a strong river we all love. And a historic place because, you know, back in the medieval times and before that, rivers were like highways and the city could develop normally only if it had river or sea next to it. So Cave did have. Cave has lots of hills. Um, it is built on seven hills and sometimes compared to Rome of the East. Also, it has a lot of uh, churches and a lot of interesting historic buildings that are under threat right now because all country and all people in Ukraine are under threat right now. Uh, but in general, I was surprised and I have noticed a couple of serious changes. Like everybody around was speaking Ukrainian. It was really difficult to find someone Russian speaking neither in service sector nor among people. And that was a great surprise because K was always like 50-50. And now I not being there for a year, I have uh, noticed this tremendous change and I love it a lot. Also, the uh, air raid sirens are really loud and cave twice that loud. And on my very first day, I decided to return back from one event on foot because it was like 25 minutes walking. And after six hours driving in the car, I felt like I want to walk. And then an air raid happened. And in Kyiv, you realize in Lutsk, I'm sorry, we are guilty, but we often ignore them because we are rarely targeted. And in Kyiv, I know you have to be careful. And here I am walking in the dark streets of some uh, streets that I cannot recognize. Some people uh, run by you, others ignore walking with their children and dogs and you don't know what to do. You don't know where shelter is, but that's my uh, guilt. 
and um, anyway that was kind of uh, interesting experience and I was even a little bit scared for a second or two but then I decided I have to be serious I have to realize that like apart from being attentive there is such a thing as destiny and you know in Ukraine you are never under protection because like my region is semi-safe but you never know what will happen in one org's brain and how they make their decisions because the decision to attack Ukraine was total nonsense <laughs> And also yesterday I was uh, departing on train and um, I wanted to show you our railway station, which is also a dangerous <laughs> location. And I filmed there, but I was not able to speak then. Well, first of all, because there are huge amounts of people. And once again, it's really loud and it's not like professional vlogging is not professional in filming. When we do Soviet myths debunked, Russian crimes or this like special projects, um, we do them professionally with Sasha, who does that really good. And when it's me, like I cannot like do everything <laughs> and not to attract attention because I cannot say that you can film like everything and feel totally confident in a country at war. And it's totally okay that people will pay attention to you. So right now I will uh, demonstrate you such a short story of me heading through the railway station to my uh, train car and how it looks inside uh, but not much explanation but maybe for some of you that will be interesting inside a train sorry no makeup again and no lights in trains like that but this is an interesting experience that i will share with you i look like madonna after her plastic surgeries i don't know why but trains are very popular or at least were well, very popular in ukraine and you can get practically everywhere with the help of a railroad and there are lots of night trains where you can slip This is how it looks inside. I'm not alone, so I will not be able to film from here. But I hope this just sneak peek into the life of the Ukrainian railway might be interesting for you. Since childhood, I loved traveling on a railway, and uh, this morning I returned back home 6 a.m. It was really early, still dark and I had lectures with students and I hoped <laughs> they will not come on Saturday, but they did. But these are not, not those one that you know, but we also have distance students who study part-time and specifically they have classes on Saturdays and Sundays, but actually these were beautiful young people and I was glad to work with them. And it's very windy and a little bit snowy outside. Uh, that's why I'm wearing this uh, hoodie and perhaps will make some warm dinner and tea for myself anyway uh i'm really grateful that you watch my videos you ask questions and you shape this community of people with whom i feel so happy warm and confident in our future victory thank you for buying me coffees thank you for becoming my patrons and supporting my future projects that will help you discover ukraine and then maybe travel to ukraine after we win there are so many inspirational things and tomorrow perhaps we will show you more of kiev um, because kiev is the heart of ukraine and i think today kiev is the heart of europe and the world thank you for being with us Slava Ukraini.